Hey, it's Dan, and welcome to Unified Gaming. So in this one, we're going to play Trash or Grab, the game where we check the Golden Vendor every week and the Infinite Archive and see if there's any items that are trash or is there stuff that is really worth grabbing. And this week's no exception. There's a few good things and some eh things. As with this series, I record this every week so you can subscribe to stay up to date with that. And please note that this has been recorded on the 18th of May. So if you are watching this in the future, things will be different. As to find the Golden Vendor, she appears every weekend and you can find her in your home base. If you are DC, you can find her in Northern High Rock. If you play it on the Aldmeri Dominion, you can find her in Western Elsewhere Gate near here. And if you play it on the Ebonheart Pat, you can find her over in the Southern Morrowind Gate. As I said, she does appear on the weekend, so do pay close attention. If you do like these videos and my stuff, then do make sure that you like, you comment and you share, but more important, you subscribe to stay up to date with the most recent stuff. And as always, I want to say a massive thanks to everyone at Patreon who helped make the videos possible. If you want to support myself and get early access and much more, there are details down below. But with the Golden Vendor, what does she sell this week? The Golden Vendor has mainly necklaces this week and some monster pieces. She has the set of the robes of the Withered Hand, when you kill an enemy, they give you resources. It's got a three second cooldown. So in my opinion, this is not worth getting. I would leave this alone with, it's just really, really bad. The second set, however, is called Pillar of an Urn. This is a really good set for PVE. If you play PVE, this is fantastic and it's definitely worth picking up. If you're in a stamina DPS, this is like one of the better proc sets out there for DPS builds. So I would 100% suggest you get this. Please note as well that this is a bind on pickup, so it means that you can't trade this item. So if you did really, really want this, then buy it and decide whether you want to use gold or AP. AP is a bit easier for some people to get, gold is a bit easier for others, so make your choice there. As for what you can use this on, this is quite good on any stamina DPS in PvE, so like Templar for example is quite good, Stam Salk, Nightblade, it's good on most stam builds. PvP wise, it pretty sucks. It, it's just not good enough what happens is people often miss this so you end up don't get like you just don't get the start on them if you have a class like a dragonite you could make this work however because you've got a full stun that is quite delayed so this is quite useful as with the second set we have the scions amulet when you deal damage with a fully charged heavy attack you you gain an imbued it aura for 10 seconds and it gives you and allies 307 magicka and stam recovery with a 20 second cooldown so it's a 50 percent uptime and if you deal damage with a fully charged heavy attack, while it's active, you grant your allies 307 weapon and spell damage. This is really good as a group set. Again, this is a set that comes from a dungeon, so you have to go and, you know, find this. You can't swap it with people, you can't buy it from people, you have to buy it here or you have to get it yourself. If you are playing PvP, this is pretty good for a group set actually, because what you can do is heavy attack, and then you can give people sustain and damage. So if it's really, really nice. And although it hits three people, it's three people. So in small scale, you can, you know, get this. So it's three plus four you, so it's four in total. If you kind of view it as rallying cry with a bit of wretched vitality, that's what this is for. It's not a 1vx set by any means. And for PvE, it's a good healer set. If you want to heal people or an off tank and give people extra sustain, this is not bad. So I would suggest getting this if you can, if you want to be able to be more of a group focus player and just help your allies much more. In Cyrodiil, you can do this with heavy attacks and group stuff. In PvE, you can do it with off tanks and healers. Our last set is War Maiden. War Maiden is a really good set, actually. It's really overlooked. And next patch with the changes to the scribing system, you have many more skills that count as magic damage. So you've got the Wield Soul spammable from the scribing system. That means that you can buff this. You can also make it buff your dots, which again, you can make a magic a dot. So things like degeneration, wield soul with lingering torment can be buffed. You can make your Ulfred's contingency be soul magic and be magic damage. So again, this has lots and lots of uses. For me personally, I would suggest waiting on this though because it is a tradable item. So you can buy this from other players. And more often than not, people will buy this and will sell it for less than this value in the first week. And then after two or three weeks, this will then go up to about this value that you see, maybe a bit higher. 
So my suggestion would be to get this if you play a Nightblade in particular, or you use lots of magic skills and you go on a damage build. Nightblade is like the best for this. And then what I would suggest is just try and buy it from a guild trader. You'll save yourself a lot of money. As of the monster sets this week, we have the Iteart helmets and Lord Warden helmets. It is worth noting that with helmets, they are easier to farm. So I'm always a bit hesitant to recommend a helmet unless it's a really good helmet or it's a DLC dungeon helmet. But as with what we got, we've got Ice Heart. So when you deal critical damage, you put a shield around you and you deal frost damage around you. If you play in PvE and you're doing dungeons and overland content and you're, you know, you're new to the game, this is pretty good. If you are someone who's a bit more versed with the game though, and kind of have a more traditional build, you could weave, etc. I would avoid this. The damage on this isn't high enough. The shield is okay. It's very, it's more fun is the best way of describing it. You could use this on Magical Warden and get some pretty good use out of this, but again, it's not meta by any means. There are better sets. So my suggestion was, if you want a bit of a fun set, give this a go. Otherwise, I'd leave it. And the dungeon itself is really easy to farm. So again, I would still leave it. You then have Lord Warden. Lord Warden is a tank set. When you take damage, you have a 50% chance to summon a Shadow Orb, and this will increase your spell damage and physical, uh, sorry, sorry, spell resistance and physical resistance. It's got a 10 second cooldown. This is for tanking. You won't use this in PvP often, in all honesty. Some people do for like tower fights, and it's very, very niche for PvP. PvE, however, is pretty decent. So if you tank in PvE, you do dungeons and so on, this is not a terrible set. There are better sets in all honesty. And if you were to tank, I'd use something like Spalder of Ruin in PvE, or I'd use like, with my one Magma Incarnate, just because that's a better combo. It gives you regen and it gives you damage boosts to your allies. So for me personally, I wouldn't run this in PvE unless I'm in pugs and I'm with groups who are not as versed and they die a bit quicker, and their armor can be quite useful. If you're on some tank classes where you don't hit armor cap for some reason, this can also be a good way to help just get you there and it helps allies. So for that reason, I would go, it's probably worth getting one of these at least, and I'd probably suggest getting the heavy armor if you haven't already, just because it gives you that option. Please obviously preface this though with the fact that this is a helmet. So if you can do the dungeon, do the dungeon and bet it is, so you're gonna save money, you're gonna save um, AP. If you don't have access to the dungeon because you don't have a group that could run it, or etc., etc., or it'd be just DLC or whatever, then I would say buy it. But beyond that, I wouldn't use it. It's not like the best, it's just more for pugs and kind of a bit of a fun set. But that's it, really. That's in the golden. So, to kind of summarize in the golden vendor before we go to the infant archive, you have Pillar of Nern. This is really good. Get this. This is a very good PvE DPS set. So, I would recommend buying this. And it's a it's one that you can't swap so for me personally i'm gonna buy it with gold because i prefer my ap than gold and that's simply because some of the traits that you get on helmets with ap is in pen whereas the gold versions are infused so for me i'm always cautious of spending my ap because i'd rather have the right trait and save transmute crystals this way around so i'm gonna buy pillar of Nern with gold because i think this is a really good set for pve the scions of amulet again this is a bind and pickup set this is a fun healer set so again, I'm going to buy this because I think it's a fun set to use and to mess around with. So this is worth looking into. And War Maiden, I have loads of it already. It is a very good set, but buy it some other players, it will be cheaper. And then the monster pieces, as we said, Ice Heart's just fun. Lord Warden, tank, but it's not. There, there are better tank sets in my opinion. In this part of the video now, we are going to go over to the Infinite Archive, where I look at the leads and then decide, are there any good mythic items that you can get from these? Because some of the leads can be a bit tedious to farm and this can help bypass that grind. As with the infinite archive, if you zoom out, you go to Apocrypha, you can teleport straight in, and this is a free zone for anybody who has the game. And in here, you can earn a currency, which is the fortunes, and you can use them to buy things. I would recommend save them. Don't waste them, you can save yourself a lot of hours. When you get here, you want to go to the east side of the place. So right at the back, just straight forward. And you're looking for a merchant called Phila Ool. Phila Ool is a great merchant because he sells different leads and different things. You can obviously buy companion stuff and it's purple. You can obviously buy some just style pages. But the main thing for us is the leads. 
And it is worth noting that as of next patch, when the Gold Road chapter does release, the scribing system will allow you to buy some scripts from here. So again, I will be really cautious about spending this currency because it can be a bit hard to farm. With that said, we have two choices today. Both are mythic items. One is for death dealer's feet and the other is for a different uh, mythic item. With the death dealer's feet item, we are going to be looking at the carved signet base. This is an item that you will get and it will give you max magicka, stamina and health. This lead, however, drops in the Imperial City from the patrol in horrors and so the boss is going around. It's quite easy to farm, in my opinion. If you find it hard to get in there because there's lots of people on your server and it's quite active and it's hard to just kill the bosses, this might be worth picking up. For me personally, I don't have any issues killing the bosses solo or doing it in a group, so I wouldn't spend this because I can get the lead myself quite easy. But if you do have a server where it's really hard to get into IC by yourself or to kill it, then this is worth picking up. It's a good mythic. It's one of the better PvP mythics. The last one then, you have the Glacial Metal Rivets. This is from the Snow Treaders mythic. When you get this mythic, it means you cannot sprint. So you don't get that 50% movement speed if you do sprint because you can't do it. But you are immune to snares and immobilizers. It's a very, very good mythic if you build around it. The issue is that this lead is easy to get. It comes from Western Skyrim Labyrinthium and it's a public dungeon and it's just the bosses there. This is really easy to farm. So I would say ignore the metal rivets. The metal rivets is just not worth it. The signet base for the death dealer's feet, however, is worth getting if you can't kill the bosses yourself or you find it really hard to get a group together to do that or your server's just too active and you're just being killed by other players in PvP. So this is worth considering, but again, I wouldn't get this unless you really cannot do that boss or get any way to get that boss killed in a group. But that's it, really. That is what we have in the Golden Vendor as of the 18th of May. The items are hit and miss in all honesty some good ones some not so good ones and the infinite archive trader has an okay lead it's worth considering if you can't get it but i'm going to call this video here so if you want to stay up to date with the series then like comment share and subscribe it really helps out and as always i want to say a massive thanks to everyone at patreon if you want to support myself there get early access and much more there's details down below but as always i'll catch you next video on the next stream which is always on saturdays at 9 p.m uk until then, take care and bye.